so very easy questions and very straightforward questions and let us uh, recall one by one yes which of the following is more severe i mean in terms of hearing loss which of the following is more severe ossicular discontinuity with intact tympanic membrane as you know this is your canal and this is your eardrum right and this is your middle ear and your malleus is broken and in cus there is a ossicular discontinuity here the sound waves will end here there is no continuity the sound waves are not getting transferred on towards the cochlear side whereas in this case what is happening here perforation is there isn't it so through the perforation the sound waves are entering and striking on the medial wall of the middle ear so somehow some sound waves are entering into the inner ear but here that is also not there so compared to b a is the one which is having more amount of hearing loss right clear and uh, karhart's notch is seen in very straightforward very easy question so it is otosclerosis karhart's notch is nothing but a dip at 2 kilohertz area on bone conduction curve right okay right yeah the step is fixed was there that's coming we are coming to that question also step is is another question i think so karhart's notch is there no karhart's notch is seen in otosclerosis straightforward question right now identify the pure tone audiogram so i have told you in your regular classes if you are getting two waves in the normal two lines in the normal area that is normal and both are with a gap lying in the upper part that is conductive hearing loss both are near to each other in the lower area or middle area snhl both are in the abnormal area separated by a gap this is mixed now you see the bone conduction curve is of 40 decibels loss air conduction curve is of 60 decibels both are more than 20 right so both are abnormal and are separated by a gap so this becomes the mixed audiogram right okay very easy straight forward question right now which is dangerous unilateral rln palsy bilateral rln palsy if you take unilateral only one vocal cord will be in the paramedian the other vocal cord will be moving so while breathing the other vocal cord will abduct and the patient can breathe so compared to unilateral bilateral is always uh, severe dangerous so out of unilateral and bilateral if you take if both bilateral are uh, paralyzed and complete paralysis is there now what happens your rln is supplying the only abductor of the larynx that is your posterior cricoarchnoid and while breathing your vocal cord should abduct then only the airway opens if bilateral rln palsy complete is there the vocal cords will not abduct patient will land in sudden gasping respiratory distress emergency tracheostomy is required here isn't it so the option will be bilateral rln palsy complete palsy will be the option right and uh, identify the fracture if the blow is from the below the line will pass vertically this is your chevalet fracture right and if the blow is from the front that is jarjave fracture that will come like this right and if the blow is from one side c shaped the dorsum will deviate like a c shaped right you know that first investigation in newborn for audiological assessment is always auto acoustic emissions some are saying that the clap and the smile option was there but no this is not the answer auto acoustic emissions even the next minute the baby born next minute you can do is auto acoustic emissions test and uh, this is the commonest most common best investigation objective investigation clap and smile is subjective you cannot do it properly objective auto acoustic emissions are the best method to rule out any presence of congenital hearing so first investigation is always auto acoustic emissions and if it is abnormal then after 3 months or 6 months after you will go for bera next right okay now 4k drop was there if 4k drop was there if in a audiogram if a pti is showing at a 4k dip 4 kilohertz dip then it should be noise induced hearing loss okay for your information sake okay fine what is the procedure done see this is a stapes piston that has been shown to you this is a stapes piston was given in one of your questions stapes piston is inserted is done in during stapedectomy to so the incus long process you will crimp the this stapes okay this head will be crimped onto the incus long process and the base will enter through the foot plate into the inner ear side right okay you are following 
and which opening is of the same level as inferior turbinate. So if you take your nasal cavity, this is your nose, right? And you have here, and this is your uvula, oral cavity, right? So here is your inferior turbinate. If you take this inferior turbinate, just one centimeter posteriorly, you are having opening of the eustachian tube. Behind the middle turbinate, you are having the opening of sphenopalatine foramen. Okay. Okay. If it is stepidotomy in the previous question, if it is stepidotomy also, even if stepidotomy, stepidectomy, in both procedures, you will use the piston anyhow. The difference is that in stepidectomy, entire foot plate is removed. In stepidotomy, you are creating a fenestration in the foot plate area. Right? Okay. So, at the same level as inferior turbinate, you have the opening of eustachian tube. Any more questions was they were there from ENT? Any more questions? All are very straightforward, very easy questions, right? If any more, kindly DM me, we'll add it up and we'll post it in the app. Any more? Okay, anyhow, you can correlate this diagram, no? This diagram you can correlate, no? This diagram you can correlate, okay? So this is your inferior turbinate, this is your middle turbinate. Posterior to middle turbinate, you have sphenopalatine foramen. Posterior to inferior turbinate, you have eustachian tube opening, right? So, so much, so easy questions have been come. So, so much scoring uh, could have been, uh, you have, might have got in the ENT. So with this, I am ending my session. And uh, I'll be transferring it to the next available faculty. So, uh, Muktaji, I have ended. Uh, ENT is closed. You can shift it to next room. Yes, Dr. Harshit. Yes, stepi suprastructure will be removed during stepidectomy or stepidotomy or stepidectomy. The crure, the two crure of the stepis will be removed. Definitely, they will be removed. Right? Conditioned audiometry screening test. No, you will do auto acoustic emissions only in a newborn. That is for sure. For screening of hearing in newborn, the first test you are going to use is screening, uh, that is auto acoustic emissions only. No doubt about that. Ossiculoplasty, see the ossicular, uh, uh, the piston, the, the materials used are completely different. Uh, the question, in the question, the diagram given is that of stapes piston only, definitely. Okay. Ossiculoplasty is a part of the CSOM surgery, right? Where your ossicles, not just stapes foot plate fixation. Stapes piston is fixed in stapes foot plate fixation. That is autosclerosis. Okay. See, the uh, Dr. Ayush, yeah, you were asking that Karhat Sarge question, no? 4 kilohertz dip you are asking. Okay, 4 kilohertz is also boiler's notch. In case of this 4 kilohertz, you will get both air conduction and bone conduction like this. Okay, at 4 kilohertz area, this is noise induced hearing loss, bone conduction and air conduction. But in case of Carhartt's notch, you will have this 2 kilohertz area dip on bone conduction curve and air conduction curve. So there will be gap in between. This indicates conductive hearing loss. There is no gap here. This indicates sensorineural hearing loss. This you see in case of autosclerosis. This you see in case of noise-induced hearing loss. Right?